that you ready your heart to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. From none other than, none other than one of our very own. Amen. The other Terrence Ryder. Let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give an honor to God, Apostle Brighto, my husband Brighto, my wife, my children, my mother, all the saints in their respective places. Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. I pray that you help me, Lord God. I pray that you lead and guide me, Lord God. Give me to say only what you have me to say, Lord God, and help me to be a help to others, Lord God. And I thank you for it. It's in your son Jesus' name I pray. Last time that I was before most of you, I preached on God qualifying those who He called, who He calls. I talked about how He called Moses and equipped him to lead His people. I talked about how He called Mother Brooks and prepared her to be an excellent teacher of His Word, thus producing four out of four saved and sanctified children of our own. I talked about how God elevated me in the natural world, which encouraged me to be open to elevation in the spiritual world. We're not here by chance. There's a work for all of us to do. We are all created for a purpose. I don't care what the devil try to tell you. You have something that God can use. But you have to be willing to obey God and seek him for understanding and direction. Whenever we accept the call of God, he gives us what we need to carry out his mission. As long as we seek him. We, don't have, to, we have to spend time with him and meditate on his word. We have to fast and pray and spend uninterrupted time with God. Once we put in the work, he can meet us halfway. See, God isn't like man. He won't put you out there and just leave you alone. Because he said in his word, he'll never leave nor forsake you. That's found in Hebrews 13 and 5. He's shown that in the Bible time and time again, and he's shown that in my life, and I'm sure other of you as well. The title of today's message is Accepting the Call from God, but the subtopic is he'll turn it around. In order to accept God's call, you have to be ready. How do you get ready, you may ask? The answer is simple. Repent. Give your life to Christ because our first call is to salvation. Yeah. We must repent and receive Christ before we can be truly ready to work for him. In order for me to accept God's call, I had to be at a place where I could hear from him and yield to him. I was drawn by God, as we all are, according to John 6 and 44. But as I reflect, reflect back to when I, was truly, when I truly realized that I needed God, I was in a place of brokenness. See, from a young boy, I always desired to be married. I always desired to raise my kids in the same household as me and their mother because my father was absent. So family structure was very important to me. But back in 2016, Minister Riley and I separated and eventually divorced. It's not what I wanted, and it didn't feel good. But it put me in a place where I knew that I needed God like never before. Yeah. It broke me to the point where I couldn't lean to my own understanding. Yeah. I had to trust in God. Yeah. Going through that pain turned my heart to, to Christ. You see, God was drawing me the entire time, but I was running. Yeah. And having my family dynamic shattered turned my heart to Christ. I'm going to tell you right now that you don't want to be drawn to God through pain if you don't have to. Yeah. Choose him because of his love for you. Yeah. And not your pain. Because you see, some pain can leave permanent scars, whether mental or physical. But my pain pushed me into preparation for what lied ahead. I said all of that to say this. God had a purpose for my life and loved me enough not to cast me away. He could have let me continue to sin and head to the devil's hell. But he didn't. He didn't have to let my life be interrupted in such a way that I would ultimately have to turn to him. You see, the devil meant it for harm. But God knew all along what I didn't know, which was if I yield to him, he would not only save me, but my family and restore my marriage. God saved me, cleaned me up, saved my children, mended my relationship with their mother, and eventually restored my marriage. God saved my entire household stemming from that situation. You see, I lived a life of sin in the first marriage. I wasn't saved. My wife was admitted. She wasn't either. We had our own form of godliness in our minds, but not the real thing. See, having that false sense of security opened the door for the enemy to attack my marriage. My immediate family was the closest thing to me and was the only thing that could cause me an immense amount of pain. But God used my pain in that situation to reconcile me back to him. And I'm so glad that he did. 
I began crying out to God and asking him to direct me to a place where I could get the help that I needed. Apostle Bright just talked about it. He laid Apostle Bright on my heart, so I reached out to see if they were in the same location. They were. So Apostle Bright and I met frequently where I received the counseling that I needed. But the awesome thing about God is he was doing a two-for-one special. <laughs> he was using Apostle Bright to counsel and to minister to my spirit man all the while simultaneously encouraging him to, to continue on his journey as a pastor. I began attending service at the Temple of Praise and eventually joined and gave my life to Christ. See, God had a plan for my life and would not cast me away. Not only because he has a work for me to do, but also because he knows what's inside me. He wants to do the same thing for you. My mother, Evangelist Maxwell, Evangelist Maxwell, excuse me, raised me in holiness so I knew enough to live right. I knew that I needed God. But this is a part of my testimony, and I hope that by me sharing it, will encourage you and allow you to see what God has done for me, he'll do for you as well. Amen. Ephesians uh, chapter 2 comes to mind here. It talked about how God reconciles us to him. Because we are all dead in sin before we are reconciled to Christ. See, once we, walk, see, we once walked in sin and rebellion against God. And if you're not, still, if you're not saved, you still do but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, reconciled us back to him. He didn't let us stay in sin. Amen. Because of this, I am now currently doing God's work. But in order to do this work, I had to learn. So I began to get around the saints and study, and to spend time with God. I learned that I needed the Holy Ghost, so I began to seek for him. You see, when you accept God's call, you can't stay the same. You have to grow up and mature in him. I learned about fasting and what it takes to get closer to God. You see, we can't live this life within our own power. We need the power of God down on the inside so that we can be kept and walk upright before him. We need his power to work for him. So I sought for the Holy Spirit in order to get the help that I needed. So you have to be teachable to operate in ministry. I don't know everything, so I, have to learn, so I had to learn how to be effective in ministry. See, being called isn't about the limelight. We have to be willing to do the dirty work. Dirty work. Yeah. You have to be willing to serve just like Jesus. Yeah. See, Jesus didn't come with an attitude of a mighty God, but he had a servant's heart. Yeah. He didn't boast nor brag about his works nor his power, yeah. but he had all the authority that the devil wished, he, wished that he had. Yeah. Serving God is only part of, walking, a part of walking in your calling. We also must continuously grow in a way that's, best, that's, a, that's pleasing to God. We have to mature and elevate to new heights because the greater your mission, the more power and maturity you will need. God gives us tests for a reason. It's kind of like school. You go from grade to grade. Then when you get in college, you go from year to year, freshman, junior, senior, sophomore. And in the job field, you go from position to position until retirement. But when you're called by God, you must go to new heights in him. You have to keep moving. As Paul said in Philippians 3 and 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, Paul realized that he had not yet arrived, and he wasn't going to turn back. So there was only one option for him, and that was to press on. How can we really walk in God's calling if we remain stagnant? It would be very difficult. So we have to keep growing and keep seeking God in order to be effective in this ever-changing society. Isaiah 1 and 19 says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Yeah. In order to accept the call of God, we must be willing to put in the work. We have to obey the laws of God. We can't do what we want to do. We must be willing to submit to God's authority. We must be willing to sacrifice and make the necessary changes in order to be obedient to God. Even though there would be obstacles and difficulties for us to face, God is able to carry us through. You see, you can't truly accept the call of God if you're not willing to be obedient. Not only to God, but to your leaders. Those in authority in your life, both naturally and spiritually. There are sacrifices and changes that must be made in order to serve God wholeheartedly. You see, Jonah was called by God to go to the city of Nineveh. 
and cry out against it because of their wickedness. Jonah was supposed to rebuke them because of their sin and call them to repentance, but he didn't. He chose to disobey God and go to Tarshish instead in an attempt to flee from God. But while he was on the ship, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Jonah ended up in the belly of, of a great fish that the Lord prepared because of his disobedience. The point of the story is, you can run, but you can't hide from God. If God calls you, you better accept it and be obedient, because obedience is better than sacrifice. All of your blessings and abundance can be held up if you're not obedient to God. Jonah found himself trapped in the belly of a fish that God had prepared for three days because of his disobedience. I said I found myself trapped in the belly, belly of a fish for over two years because of my disobedience. Not an actual fish, but just bound. So that gave me time to come to Christ. Even though I was in Christ, I was still trying to do things my own way. While I was in that period of isolation, I should have been trying to please God instead of my flesh. But I was trying to please myself. Hence, now me dealing with issues that would not be so if I had, if I had have just been obedient. Moses did great and mighty things. But he missed out on the promised land because of disobedience to God. See, we can't change the ways of God. We can't even begin to comprehend them because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we have to seek him for understanding as well as learn from those who are watchmen of our souls, such as our leaders. We have to go that extra step to put in the work. That is why it's important for me to attend Sunday school and Bible study. I don't know everything. And I know that I need to know, and I know I need to continue to learn and get better. My title doesn't matter if I'm not being all that I can be for Jesus and in Jesus. The devil will have you so fearful that you are able to do the things that God has called you to do. More often than not, a lot of us are, are hesitant to accept God's calling on our lives. We tend to let our doubts and fear of failure get in our way. But God is able to help us carry out his mission. For he said in his word, we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. Yeah. God has equipped us with power to do his deeds. There are examples of this in the Bible as well. God used Moses to deliver his people from Pharaoh and lead them to the promised land, even though he was once working for his father-in-law as a shepherd. He used Gideon to deliver Israel from the Midianites, even though he was the least in his father's house. He used David, who was merely a shepherd boy, to slay Goliath, even when no one else could. Yeah. God will use you, too, if you're willing and obedient, because God is able. He's more than enough. God is able to turn any situation around. He's God. He answers to no one. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. There's nothing that he can't do. We have to submit to him. We have to come up under his will, under his authority. So as I close, I want to reiterate a few points. The first point was being ready. We can't be ready if we don't receive Christ. So our first call is to salvation. We can't do any real works of God if we aren't his and his alone. It doesn't matter about how good of a person that you are or how successful you may be. Salvation is still necessary. Once we receive Christ, we have to be willing and obedient. None of us are perfect and we have all made mistakes, but we don't have to stay there. God would turn this situation around. Yes. See, I talked about me because it's, it's me, and I don't mind. While I was separated from Minister Riley, I came to Temple Praise. I joined, served, and got saved, but I was still was trying to do things my own way. And in that, I made another mistake. I'm not calling the child a mistake, but it, it, it is what it is. I, I had a child out of wedlock, out of, you know, sin. I'm just going to call it what it is, sin. I knew I should have been sitting down. I, I was serving God, but I was trying to please myself. Yeah. As a result of that, I love Carson. Don't get me wrong. I love him. As a result of that, now I'm attached to, to you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm attached to his mom for the next 18 years or more. And I'm not saying that to, to you know, bash her. But I wouldn't have to deal with that. I wouldn't have, to, I wouldn't have that burden. I wouldn't have that weight if I had to just listen to God. Yeah. So sometimes I see him, sometimes I don't, because he lives with his mother. And that bothers me. 
But that's because of my sin. That's because of the choices I made that put me in that situation. So I'm saying that to say, if you take what I'm saying, take my testimony and apply it to your lives. Go a different way than what you may currently be going. I'm, I don't know nobody's situation in here. I don't know nothing about anybody. But what I'm, you know and God knows. Whatever's going on in your life that is causing a, a disconnect between you and God, get rid of that thing now. Now, before you end up in a situation where, like me, <laughs> you're stuck. <laughs> um, so, yeah, where was I? <laughs> oh yeah, none of us are perfect and we all have made mistakes but we don't have to stay there. God will deliver us and help us if we're willing and obedient. God will also help us or enable us to carry out his great mission. We don't have to worry or fret because God is on our side. He is all seeing, all knowing and undefeated. So if you're willing to accept the call of God in your life, give your life to Christ today. And if you already profess salvation, Make a commitment to relinquish whatever a, whatever is driving a wedge between you and God. Yeah. So if you're in the room today or watching virtually and you feel God's calling you, but you feel unworthy or unqualified, make up your mind today to step out on faith and trust God. Yeah. But like I said at first, in order for this to apply, you must first be saved because our first call is to salvation. So I'm going to ask that you raise your hands as we pray. Dear Jesus, come into my life. I believe that you died for my sin and God wrote, I'm sorry, and God raised you from the dead. I pray that you come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Save me. Wash me. Purge me. And be the Lord of my life. And I live for you all the days of my life. And I thank God that I am right now saved. I thank God that I am right now. One more time. I thank God that I am right now saved.